Okay, good afternoon everybody, DK with Mr. V Amps, and today's project we are going to begin building a Weber 6A14 amplifier um, from their kit. I do this in my own style, I have a couple of, you know, different uh, things that I bring to the table that maybe aren't included in the kit, but not much. Um, I have my layout diagram here, and we are going to kind of be working backwards. A lot of times when these orders arrive, I take them apart and inventory them, and then something I was looking for isn't there. But um, I think what, and, and then I tell them, and then they fix it, because they're usually pretty nice guys. Um, you know, if, they, if it's a pot or a resistor or something, I can forgive it, but sometimes it's, you know, uh, something that I don't have. Uh, laying around. Um, okay, so I'm going to start by building our eyelet board here. And for those of you all who, you know, you, you'll see how we build on the eyelet board, and you'll see that there are traces that run through the holes and underneath, and some that run from point to point, and some like Y here which is a runner between these two that isn't actually drawn, but it, it's there. So we'll get, uh, we'll start building away on that. Okay. So let's start with the simplest thing and work forward. We have the bias board. That is this. There's a piece of cardboard to go underneath it so that when you attach it to the chassis, it doesn't ground out and cause smoke and fire. We need a diode, a 50 microfarad capacitor, a 22K resistor, a 10K resistor. This lead comes off the transformer. And then we're going to need two leads coming off of it to go to the bias adjustment pot. I think we can handle that. Okay, and with our components located, we can commence assembly. Some of us want to get style points, so I'm going to try to get some style points here for, you know, really making it look like I know what I'm doing. Make sure you properly observe the polarity of your diode. Strike going that way. Also, you want to observe carefully the polarity of your capacitor, plus going to this side. And just to keep all of the super nerds happy, we will make sure that the text is up, because they like to read it for some reason. We also don't want to block our screw hole. So there really is no good place to put this unless you're going to ride it 
you know, directly above. Hmm. What would look good? We can ride it up here, and that will be just fine. Do I really have concerns about the negative of that possibly grounding out? Maybe it will. Let's put some sleeve on that. going to tack solder and not fill that hole on this side because we're awaiting a wire to come to that later. As goes for this hole and this hole will get a ground so the other holes will need to get some wires added so we're only going to tack solder here. Just enough to keep the component from moving for the moment. And there's still enough room to get our wire in there, but our components aren't going to go anywhere. Super. Now we can clean up the backs. We just need to add the wires. So if we look at the way it is, we have, like I say, the actual board's a little different than the picture, but it's close. This will be a ground wire. This one will go to the transformer. So this one, transformer. This one, ground. These two will sweep down to the bias pot. And here is our completed bias board. Just like our diagram, we have two wires. In this case, I used blue and yellow to go to the bias pot. I have one to go to the ground, and then the transformer lead will go there. One down, a lot more to go. Okay, we're now going to construct this board here. And there are a lot of wires that run underneath, so we need to be very cognizant of that. Uh, we're going to start, I say the board pretty well approximates the picture. So we're going to start on the left side and work our way right, populating it with components and wires, and uh, you can check in on with me in just a few minutes. There, and that's how you make the board. Um, yeah, I know. Somebody wanted to probably watch a lot of intermediate footage of soldering and things like that. But uh, this is tedious, and it requires a lot of concentration and a lot of not distraction. But essentially, what I've done is I've built everything through here, and with the exception of just a few of the wires that tack on from over here, it's all here ready to go. I have excess slack on my wires. My grounds are the bare ones. See those little carrot arrows, those are grounds, right? Those all go to the brass plate that's going on the front, right? And some of these, like D, D also goes to here, 
and also goes to here and then to there. And then like Y is a link from here to there. B is a link from here to here. And then, you know, we've got to here and over there. So you have to have all of these traces. And they're all diagrammed properly. And you're essentially making your own PC board. Okay. Boy, that's shiny. So here's our chassis and here's my air conditioner vent. Huh. Um, anyway, first thing I did was I just put the donuts in the holes here. The This one's for the reverb transformer and these two are going to be for the output transformer. The output transformer has got its bolt holes as does the uh, reverb transformer over here. We'll mount those in a few minutes but I think I'm going to put on the tube sockets. Okay so I'm making progress. This one had like a vinyl protective shield on it so I'm peeling it off as we go. I got the tube sockets in. There's the reverb transformer, there's the output transformer, the wires are running through the grommets. This is a can cap. Um, the four negatives, you kind of give them a twist to hold it in, and then you solder your ground around to it, and that's what really holds it in. Alright, so let's flip that over, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so there's our filter cap. All four of them are 20 so it really doesn't matter uh, that they're not labeled because they're all the same. Um, tube sockets obviously are in. That is the bias pot. It's adjustable with the screwdriver on the other side. Okay and then back here that's the brass plate that you have to install. Now I've put in two potentiometers. You're seeing the brass plate it's a reflection. Okay, this is actually the chassis. That's the brass plate up there. Let's tip it. Maybe you can see better that way. There you go. There's a direct shot of the brass plate. I put in two potentiometers to hold it. Um, we're going to have to solder our grounds up to that. So that's going to take the big old soldering iron. And that brass plate has plastic on one side, so be sure to take that off. Okay, I made an executive's decision. To mount the board, I put in two little plastic standoffs. Um, by default, you can normally run screws straight into there. This side would work fine. This side, the output transformer is running on the other side, so I would end up running a screw into it, and that ain't good. Um, so if you, you have to use a real short screw and kind of tap it if you're going to use a screw. So I opted to use a standoff, and then I can just go into the plastic. On top of that, the little bit of space gives me a bit more room for the reverb transformers wires as well as the output transformers wires. I don't know if you all can see that but the four naked wires that were on the front of the board I soldered them to the brass plate. Those are our grounds as represented in our diagram right there. See those four carat arrows at the top there they got four carat arrows those go up to the brass plate that's what those are. And to solder to that brass plate is not easy. It requires a lot of heat. And I have a plumber's soldering iron. It's 80 watts. This is just barely enough to do the job. Okay, so there's our brass plate. And I did install a runner that goes up to that flower looking thing. Well, what is that flower looking thing? Well, it's kind of a gift. Um, it's a big copper stud that they put on the chassis. I was not expecting that, but uh, it's a beautiful place to ground things. So I took a bunch of my solder tabs and made a little star or flower or whatever. This is kind of the thing they call star ground. And, um, you know, stack them together, put a nice snug nut on there and now I have a kind of a universal grounding spot so I checked the <clears throat> resistance from all my grounds here you know to the central ground and you know with the brass plate and everything and I'm looking at like two tenths of an ohm 
So that is good. That's real good. Um, we don't have any real ground, you know, an amp, this amp will start to hum and buzz and make crappy noises if, for example, that brass plate is got too much resistance to where the power transformers are grounded and whatnot. So once we get our power transformer in there, you know, we'll ground the center taps and the earth ground for the, for everything, and just ground everything right there, because there it is, and it's there to be grounded to. So, super cool. Be nice. Get that going. Um, had to move the bias pod, just rotate it a little bit because of where the board was. And they don't really have a good screw hole <laughs> to put the bias board, so I think we'll put it right about there. Maybe drill and put a screw in there and put the bias board in. Okay, so we're just soldering away. We've done the uh, preamp and you know, reverb and tremolo tubes, and I did hook up the outputs of the uh, output transformer, the outputs to the speaker jacks, and the switches there for the reverb. And again, it's all just a matter of following the diagram and trying to keep it neat. Have fun with that. The only tricky tube maybe would be the 12AT7, where it's got a couple of jumpers. But it's pretty straightforward. So just try to keep your wires, you know, short and neat. Um, the solid core wire there with the uh, pullback jacket, that stuff is easy to work with, love it. The um, rubber coated wire that's on the uh, transformers doesn't really like to stay in a shape, so you gotta kinda figure out how to make it stay in a shape. But the uh, yellow and the blue and the, the uh, got a couple reds in here, that solid core pushback wire, that stuff is easy to work with. So, cool. Now we gotta go wire up there. Okay, so, I don't remember, I think last time we checked in, we had finished the back line and the speaker hookups, right? So now I was working on the front lines there. Um, only naked one over there that isn't supposed to be naked is that goes down to the bias pot. The rest of them are all done. I just passed over my mistake. Did you guys see it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. You can see the band-aids. I guess it's not really a super mistake, but I misunderestimated the length of the wires. I usually give myself, you know, six inches or so to play with. But to that pot, I mean, if you look at the diagram, that would be these leads right there. You know, um, that's a lot sharper angle in reality from here to there. That's a lot longer than it appears on the diagram. So I was fooled. Oh well. Like I say, we got two little band-aids down there. It will not affect performance. And we got the jacks all wired beautifully. And uh, what, one of the tricks you can do to make wiring the jacks because you got you got to do the resistors and then there's the mega ohm resistor that goes around there. Um, plug those jacks into the front of your amp. You don't actually have to screw them down, but stick them out there on the other side, wire them up, and then bring them around. That way you get your wire lengths nice and short and pretty the way you like it so everything's kind of together and you don't have a mess. Alright, cool. I think I'm going to call it for tonight. Oh, um, as far as like the resistors to ground or the leg of the pot that is to ground, we can literally just do that. The volume pot, we just have a little clipped lead soldered right on the pot. The pot is on the brass plate. The brass plate is ground. Um, the same goes for that resistor and that resistor. And yes, I have a solder drip. Oh my gosh, that's my second mistake. I used a little too much solder in one spot. Uh, I'm exposed. Okay, so today the mailman has brought over the missing transformer. It's a power transformer, which is kind of critical to the amplifier working. So there it is. And now we can put it in the amplifier. Yay! Okay, and like magic, 30 minutes later, the um, 
power transformers in. These three leads are not connected, so they're shrink wrapped and tucked away. Um, blue red stripe is the bias. Uh, brown is the 120 volt to the switch, black is the one to the common, red, red, white go down to uh, pins 6 and 4 on the uh, rectifier tube and it gets tight because of this out, this inlet here, or the outlet, outlet, inlet, whatever you want to call it. And then on the yellow leads for the filament for your rectifier tube go to 8 and 2 and the high voltage comes off of 8 then then that goes to the standby switch which is uh, all the way over there so that lead right this lead right there is the same lead that you see soldered onto the yellow one there I, I bent that one pin down that's an unused pin just so it's out of the way so it doesn't touch the earth ground of that socket um, so at this point uh, we're ready to kick some tires and light some fires I suppose okay so this is the first power up um, the power lights on there there are no tubes there should be no high voltage because there's no rectifier tube but um, I want to see what we have for a bias voltage it should be about 30 ish volts Let's just look around here. We should be coming off of... There we go. So we got 32. That's close to the 34 that they want, but we're going to want to go up a little bit in value. So let's see if I can reach this pot under here. The factory recommended value is 34, but we're going to go a little higher because start the tubes colder and turn them up. So there's 36 and a half. That should be okay. All right, it's minus 36 and a half. So minus 36 is fine. Um, like I say, they're shooting for 40, they're, or not 40, they're sh shooting for 34 factory. And of course that might be, you know, we still might be on the hot side once we get everything measured, but so far so good. Now we're gonna add a rectifier tube and see if we get high voltage and sparks. Okay, here's our second power up with the 5U4 rectifier installed. It is glowing and we should be looking for some fairly high voltages here that will end up at the standby switch. So let's check for that. Obviously with no rectifier tube the bias uh, control is done to the diode so that will definitely get you your voltages. Let's see what we have on the standby switch. I have 296. Okay. And we'll flip the standby on, not like we really. Uh, well, as soon as I flip the standby on, was I seeing that jumping over? I'm sorry, I got it wrong. We got 396.8. I need to change the battery in this voltmeter. So, just shy of 400 volts. That seems pretty reasonable. Our, let's see, to the output transformer, about 400. That's our C rail that we don't use. About 400. B rail, uh, again, about 400 because this is not loaded. But, uh, yeah, we're looking okay so far. So, time to put some tubes in and then see if it's going to want to make some noise. Okay, third time. Now we're going to power up again. Um, we should be all right. I mean, I'm going to look for some glow, make sure all the tubes are glowing, knock my camera out of whack. You know, the usual fare. I got a speaker plugged in this time, so this time we should get some sound. See how we're doing. I got a glow on that. 6V. I don't think I see a glow on this one. Because there is a filament glowing on this one. It doesn't look like the filament is glowing on this tube. 
Now this one doesn't look like the filament's glowing. So, is it because the tube is hard to see the filament, or is there something jazzed out with these wires? Let's find out. Okay, I gave it a little over apple cart flip there so I can see it. That tube is glowing, it's just hard to see it glowing. So I got a speaker. Um, get a speaker or a little input lead here and uh, let's see if it flies I guess uh, and then I'm taking a break and going to the auction <laughs> all right so let's pick an input here click so we're in and here's where all the smoke comes when we take it off the standby and nothing happened a little bit. Okay, I hear a lot of buzzes is, is, is in the tubes. The amplifier, I can hear the tubes buzzing, but I can't hear my speaker. So is my speaker messed or is it disconnected or what? Let's find out. Okay, yes, that was the case. The sacrificial speaker at the other end of the lead had become disconnected, so that would explain that. Let's kick her back on. Okay, no real hum or bad noise. And we have sound. We just need to see if reverb works. See what's the easiest way to test if reverb works? Well, I suppose we'll come off the, we'll turn the reverb up, and then we'll just put our finger on reverb output. Now that's picking something up, so I don't know if it's sending. We can check that with the O scope. And then we can check that on the tremolo low, low, low. It's definitely tremolo low, low, lowing. You guys hear that? actually got a nice slow speed on it too. Let's check the other input and see if it works okay too. Eh, the answer is no. So I've got something a little buggered on the input jacks on this side. This input jack is a little buggered. I think too much signal is escaping to ground and I measured that you know what it is it's a switch that switch isn't coming off I don't think or maybe it is yeah that switch is not coming off of the switch was not coming off switch isn't coming off well. That's all it is. So I think that switch is pressed in a little too tight or this jack fits a little bit too what weeble wobbly. So I think we're actually I think we're actually gonna work just fine. But it's time for me to go to the auctions and see what kind of treasures I find. I will warn you ahead of time, probably not much, but uh, yeah, it looks like our amp seems to work okay. I'm going to check on this input jack and just see. It might just be out of adjustment, whereas my El Cheapo input cable there isn't disconnecting the uh, switch. And with the switch staying in, it puts the signal to ground. And uh, when your signal goes to ground, there will be no sound. Um, but other than that, our amplificator works. I did put the negative feedback modification in here where it disconnects the feedback loop. I have that listed as happy versus angry. Uh, I thought that would be fun and easy, but yeah, we're we're about to have a completed amplificator. Yippee. Okay, so nothing exciting has happened. Um, I went to the auction, that was fun. Um, didn't buy much. 
but nothing to show for that really. Um, I checked a couple things on here. The bias was super cold. This is a push-pull amp. So I set the bias at 68%, which 70 is your max, so I went with 68. Usually as the tubes wear, it'll actually start to draw a little less current, so we're not uh, putting anything at risk. And then uh, we know that the tremolo low, 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 low works fine. Uh, I wanted to check to see if I had reverb input or, you know, to drive the tank. So I'm looking at the tank with my little pocket scope. And Yep, it's getting drive, so that's just fine. And then if I turn up the reverb pot over here and I just put my little finger on that, so it's, it's listening. So logically the reverb should work. Um, I can probably check the pedals to make sure that they work, but um, the amp doesn't hum, the amp doesn't buzz. Using a shoddy, crappy quarter inch jack or quarter inch plug onto here was the problem. As soon as I put a good one on, it works fine. So, yeah, this amp is basically ready to, for final assembly. Sorry I didn't have anything to troubleshoot. Nothing to learn. Just watch some dude build an amp and have it work. So, the pedals work too. So yeah, everything works. Time to put it together, I guess. Um, we're going to label the... I like reverb on this side and tremolo on that side so I'm going to label these so I know to put them in the right spots. Okay so there's our new amplifier that started life as a Weber what's it called? A 6A14 60 style reverb and tremolo amp <laughs> reverb at like four, four, three and a half, four, and it's already like surfy. So, I don't know how extreme we can make this thing surf. It's a very, very surfy reverb. Wow, we're just like glistening here. Alright, and we have also the, of course we do have tremolo circuit, which is a bias modulating type, which is the kind that doesn't tick, which is great. So we'll leave our reverb on, we'll make it a little more mellow. Yeah, that's a really surfy reverb. That's really cool. Uh, kind of why I picked this color for the amp, because as soon as I knew what I was building, I'm like, it's going to be surfy. So, tremolo. vibrating. Um, I got the volume at three and it's got plenty of volume, probably even too much for the camera, but uh, all right. And I told you, I told you, I told you I put an angry circuit on it. So let's turn off the reverb and tremolo and let's go to our bridge pick or our bridge pickup. Yep. That's the pickup on this that usually gets nasty. Let's put it into an overdrive. plenty loud and then we'll turn off the negative feedback loop by putting it into angry mode and so yeah that definitely gives it a lot 
lot more growl. So if you want an angrier version of the amplifier, there you go. There's your happy angry mod. It just disconnects the negative feedback loop and gives you a bit more bass and a little bit more growl. How cool is that? So this project pretty much went off went off without a hitch. Um, I know people probably wanted to learn a lot about troubleshooting and things like that, but I figured I would just take you along on the adventure. Um, when I do these, I like to concentrate a lot, so talking you through every single soldering component, we've already done that with the Smoke and Joe, it's just kind of uh, a thing. Follow your diagram, go very carefully, use your little beepy meter, check for continuity between all your points, you know, do like one tube at a time, you know, and or do your board, you know, check for continuity between the runners that go under the board, make sure everything's right, check for continuity to stray parts that it doesn't belong, you know, double check yourself and you may be in my position where your amp just works and really freaking works. And I got the volume turned down. Let's turn the volume back up. There we go. That's what we want. We like loud. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, this was, it was a real straightforward project. Um, you know, make sure you're when you solder something, you solder it good and that everything matches your diagram and, and you know, everywhere there is a ground, there needs to be a ground and blah 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 and it, it's gonna work for you. So this kit, this kit's definitely a winner. Um, my modifications were a couple of the little grounding lug tabs that I like. I made the little star ground out of them and uh, I bought my tubes, I bought tongue saw tubes instead of taking the stock tubes. Have a great day.